You know, one of the things that's kind of fun about getting to do your own production agriculture show is you can tell it like it is and, and you can say, you know, here's the bad side of this product or something you want to watch out for. You don't just have to focus on the positives. Well, Brian is talking about a couple of products you want to be careful about later on in the season and he mentioned Pinnacle and I thought, okay, well, maybe Brian just doesn't want to make DuPont upset <laughs> that he's talking about their product Harmony GT and so he's using the old name that probably hasn't been on the market for 10 years. Maybe it comes with the gray hair, Brian. I, I don't know. I think know. it was only maybe six or seven years ago they got rid of that and changed the name to Harmony GT and changed the concentration. So anyway, nevertheless, uh, let's talk about something current. Like lately, we've had a lot of questions from people saying, should I foliar or feed my crops? We had that question earlier in the season about wheat. Even now, we're still getting that question about corn and certainly about soybeans. One of the questions that's come in is, should I use micronutrients? Something like TJ Micromix, can I spray that right over the top of the crop? You know what? You can put it in some water and you can spray that over the top of the crop. But here's the thing, on our farm, we've had better luck more consistent results from putting fertilizer in the soil. Now granted, we have relatively heavy soil in a lot of our fields, so it's not a big problem out there. If you had pure sand and you can't hold a lot of nutrients, you're kind of stuck to go out and foliar your feed on a regular basis. But the main point is this, with foliar feeding, you can do it. We'll talk about some of the steps you might want to take on your farm. It's just we've had a little more consistent results by putting fertilizer in the soil. And just to add to that, I'd say the big caution is if your fertility levels are poor and your crop is already suffering, you aren't going to be able to completely fix that with a foliar program. So don't think, oh man, I had a disaster. We had a wet year. I didn't get any fertilizer out there at all. My crop has looked horrible all year up to this point. You aren't going to turn a, a 20 bushel crop into a 60 bushel crop crap just by throwing a little bit of fertilizer on there. So you, you have to watch out what you're doing here when you're and, and look at what your expectations are in a foliar program. Well first of all with your expectations of a foliar program you can't expect much because you can only put a small amount of nutrients out there. You can't go out and put a hundred pounds of nitrogen right over the top of a crop and expect it not to get burned. So you've got to use small amounts of fertilizer, put it with a fair amount of water and then you're okay. But coming back to the example of a guy who says, well, should I put micronutrients over the top of my corn or soybeans? I just say, you know, if you're going to put a quart of micronutrients over the top for, let's say, $6, you don't have a lot of risk. I still think it's better to put it on pre-emerge, at planting time, something like that. But if you want to put over the top foliar, you know, $6 is less than the cost of one bushel of corn. So you don't have to have much return. It's less than a half a bushel of soybeans. You don't have to have much yield gain there and you're going to make it pay. Worst case scenario, let's say you get no yield gain you know what you still put fertilizer out on your ground it's gonna get used at some point by some crop down the road so you don't have a lot of risk especially when crop prices are this high well with foliar fertilizer we aren't talking about doing a complete program that way so we are talking about smaller quantities something that can be done fairly easily with your sprayer so you're not looking to put out uh, 84 pounds of potassium like we were talking about earlier but you may be putting out 10 or 15 pounds as a supplement or as a little boost maybe you see that your crop looks fantastic in the field and you say wow a little bit more fertility out there I might be able to get some okay. more top end yep and 10 or 15 pounds uh, that's that's still even more than realistically you're going to be able to do we've tried things like a uh, couple of gallons or maybe just a gallon of th something like 31818 18. so what are you really going to get out there a pound or two maybe three or four pounds of P and K each, you're not going to get tremendous amounts of nutrients out there. The key though is if you can get it out at the right time and you get it out when your crop is willing to accept that or when it really needs some of these nutrients, like especially after a rainfall. If you've had drought for the last month and a half and then you think you're going to go foliar feed, you know what? Your crop is mostly shut down, so the best time to do foliar feeding is usually shortly after a rainfall when your crop is really starting to grow and when you know it needs lots of nutrients. Well, at this time of year, it gets to be pretty critical in certain crops for nutrient concentration in the plants and their uptake of nutrients in terms of making good yields in the fall. So foliar fertilizer is certainly something that you want to look at for your farm. It's not a complete fertility program, but it can be used to supplement with a few pounds of added nutrients late in the year. Well, foliar fertilizer may be something you're trying to do to increase yield on your farm, but something you absolutely have to do is get our Weed of the Week under control. We'll tell you how to stop it coming up next. <laughs> 